Hello and welcome to another video. So in this really quick video, we're going to be talking about the limit laws. The limit laws are kind of a way to tool limits uh, in a very simple sort of way. So they essentially allow to kind of simplify the limit, sort of like how algebraic equations are simplified and work with limits in a more simple sort of form. So what do I mean by that? So let's take a look at what the limit laws exactly are. So suppose I have the following limits. So I'm going to use a blue for this color. Okay, so suppose I have the following limit. So suppose the limit as x approaches a of f of x and the limit as x approaches a of g of x. Suppose that both of these limits exist. So assume that both of these exist. And they have to exist because of reasons which we'll show later. So if both these limits exist, then the following are equivalent. So let's go ahead and write down these limit laws. So I'm going to write them down one by one. Okay, so the first one, actually, let's just write, in, write them down one by one. So the first one, the limit as x approaches a of f of x plus g of x is equal to the limit of the individual sums. So as x approaches a of f of x plus the limit as x approaches a of g of x. That should be fairly straightforward. Same thing with the subtraction. So if I have the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus g of x, that's equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus the limit as x approaches a, let me just, yep, a of g of x. Okay, so next, let's go ahead and move this down a little bit. Okay, so the next one, if I have the limit as x approaches a of a constant, I should be using square brackets here, a constant times f of x, that's equal to the constant times the limit as x approaches a of f of x. So as you can see, most of these are fairly obvious. There's nothing too complicated about them. So the next one, the limit as x approaches a of f of x times g of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x multiplied by the limit as x approaches a of g of x. Okay, the next one. If I have the limit as x approaches a of f of x divided by g of x, well, that's equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x divided by the limit as x approaches a of g of x. And of course, this assumes the fact that uh, the limit, the bottom one can't be zero. So we assume that the limit as x approaches a of g of x can't equal zero. Okay, next one. The limit as x approaches a of f of x to the n is equal to, well, we take the limit as x approaches a of f of x raised all to the power, all raised to the power of n. So essentially, I just move the limit inside this power. And this assumes that n is an integer. So this little fancy symbol right there means integer. So n is an element of the integers. So nothing too wild yet. The next one, the limit as x approaches a of a constant c is equal to the constant. And this should be fairly obvious. For example, if I have a graph and here's my constant c, and let's suppose that this right there is a, the limit as x approaches a, well, that's going to be c. It's going to be c everywhere. So it doesn't really matter where my a value is. So it's going to give me a constant every single time. So again, that should be fairly obvious. Uh, next one, the limit as x approaches a 
of x equals a. And once again, same kind of idea. The graph of y equals x looks something like that. Suppose this is a, or yeah, suppose that this value right there is a. So consequently, the y value is also going to be a. So if this is y equals x, if I plug in if I plug in a into x, well, the y value is also going to be a. So that should be fairly obvious. Okay. So the next one. So ninth property. Most of these are fairly obvious, so you should be able to kind of look at this intuitively. The limit as x approaches a of x to the n is equal to a to the n. Again, same thing, I just plug in the a into the x value. So nothing too crazy there. There's more formal ways to prove these limits using something called the epsilon delta definition. But we don't have to worry about we don't have to worry about that for an introductory level calculus course. So no worries there. The next one is the limit as x to per se of the end root of x. Well, that's equal to the end root of a. And of course, this assumes that n is a positive integer. So let me just make a correction there. Uh, yeah, sorry, not correction. Let me just make a, let me just emphasize that here. So n is in the element of the integers such that n is positive. So essentially what this fancy kind of language is saying is that n is in the space of integers such that n is bigger than zero. So we essentially, I'm just essentially saying n has to be a positive integer. So that's just a little bit of fancy language. And the last one, <coughs> excuse me, is the limit as x approaches a of the end root of f of x is equal to the end root of the limit as x approaches a of f of x. And this is and this has the same condition that n is uh, in the space of integers such that n is bigger than zero. So nothing too wild there. Now as a quick kind of cautionary tale, remember for these limit laws to work, both of these limits have to exist. So let's take a look at an example where the limit laws actually fail. So I'll do two very quick examples about that. So let me scroll down here actually. So let's use a different color for this. I'll use green. So example one. So suppose I tell you that f of x equals 1 over x. And suppose I tell you that g of x equals, let's see, minus 1 over x. So the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x plus g of x, well, this limit is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x minus 1 over x. Of course, if I add that, I get 0. So I get the limit as x approaches 0 of 0. And of course, by property number 7, 0 is a constant. So that's going to be called 0. So nothing too wild there. But the problem is, does this equal to the limit of the individual sums? Well, no. And the reason for that is because if I attempt to break this, I get the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x plus the limit as x approaches 0 of minus 1 over x. And the problem is that this limit is undefined. So 1 over x, this limit is undefined. That's also undefined. So DNE. So as a result, you can't, so, and of course, 0 does not equal DNE. So you can only use the limit laws if the limit actually exists at that point. So for example, if that limit approached, if that limit approached 1, that'd be fine. But because it approaches 0, and the individual limits themselves are not defined at 0, we have a problem. So that's not going to work. Let's do another quick example just to kind of highlight that the limit laws don't always work. So the next one is the, let's go ahead and write that down. Uh, let's see, we have the limit as x approaches 0 of x times sine 1 over x. Okay, 
So if you go ahead and uh, and you know split this limit, uh, we we would have to write this as the limit as x approaches zero of x multiplied by the limit as x approaches zero of sine one over x. Now you might be tempted to write the answer zero because this limit is zero and zero multiplied by anything is zero. Well, the problem is that this limit right there is undefined. It doesn't exist at zero. So this limit cannot be done using the limit laws. So it's not correct to write zero times d and e equals zero. That's uh, you can't you can't do that. So you have to use the squeeze term in order to do this question. And I'll leave that to you to kind of do as an exercise. But my point is that you can't just use the limit laws all the time. You can only do it when the individual limits themselves actually exist. So this limit exists, but this limit doesn't. It doesn't exist. So you can't use the limit laws like that. Same thing here. You can't use the limit laws because these individual limits were undefined. So as long as you keep that in mind and the individual limits do exist, you are free to use the limit laws however you want. But otherwise, be very careful. Okay, with that, I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much. And if you have any questions, concerns, or anything, please leave us something in the comments. And if this video helped you, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much. Have a great day.